Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So today, and just for today, we're going to be doing Sunday service like this. Uh, it's a virtual background, obviously, and, ob and I want to minister to you the best way that I can. Now, obviously, for the people who are unable to come to our church building, and for those of you who are watching online, the way that you can send offering to us is by clicking the PayPal donation button. All you have to do is go to the About section in this YouTube channel. Go to the About section, scroll down, and you will see a donation button link toward our church, San Jose Church. Click on that one, and it's easily done. All right, you all go ahead, and you can give your offering to the Lord at that time. And then while you're all doing that, I'm going to be preaching to you today's sermon. So I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 13, please. Revelation chapter 13. Just a few announcements is that, first of all, I want to apologize for the horrible audio and choppy video quality in the past couple of days. Unfortunately, in our church building, the internet bandwidth is not really that good, I think, or the connection is not that strong. But whatever may be the issue, we're still working on that, and we still need some time where we can be able to fix them and then be able to better minister to you. So please be patient with us during this time. We're exhausting ourselves. I'm exhausting myself at this time. What we could use is just your support and encouragement uh, rather than criticism, because we are doing our best to minister to you. And it's not easy, especially since Satan's been attacking a lot within our church and trying to minister to you people online. So please be supportive at this time, and we sure appreciate that. Um, what's going to happen is that the next couple of days, you will see me teaching to you. So I'll be posting the videos up to you. This will include Revelation verse by verse, and Lord willing, also some things concerning about conspiracies, end times, and also some apologetics and dispensationalism. So during this time, what we could sure appreciate is that you please stay in touch with our channel, especially to my church members, if you can please do that because we're not meeting together as a church. So it is very essential that you watch every single day what I post so that you can be spiritually fed. And for those of you who are watching online, perhaps you've been used to doing that, well then you're doing well. Just keep up the good work. But what we could sure use is your prayer. Your prayer and your support because the devil, he's been really trying to attack our internet work ministry uh, during this time while we're unable to meet as a church. So we could sure appreciate the prayers, the support, encouraging comments. And as usual, the donations that you send to our church has been very helpful to us. As it not, uh, had it not been for that, we would not be able to support the many missionaries as well as keep our ministries going. So thank you so much. The Lord laid it upon my heart to preach this message. And I believe it's going to be very important. I say that with a lot of messages, but I've gone through a, how do I say this? I've been through something in my life. The Lord put me through something in my life where I've done a lot of thinking and praying and surrendering and through a lot of hurting as well. But through this, I became much stronger and much more determined. And I hope that it will reach to you. Revelation chapter 13, please. Oh, before I read the text, I just want to mention, so what you're going to notice is that for Sunday services, we're going to be starting at 11 in the morning, 11 in the morning for our Sunday main service. And then Sunday Bible study will be starting at 12.30 p.m., 12.30 p.m. And then for Wednesday discipleship, we'll be starting at 7 p.m., and then for Wednesday, Bible study will be 8.15 p.m. Now, Lord willing, this will remain consistent until the shelter in place is removed, and then we'll see what will happen from there. 
but please keep tabs on our YouTube channel and then that way you can see when we'll be up. Okay, anyways, back to our main text, Revelation chapter 13. We'll read verse 4. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, the author of the book of Revelation told you, if you have an ear, then hear. Hear what? This is how important it is, is that when the new world order, one world government, one world religion sets up, the Antichrist, he will have a reign and a power that will overrun the whole world. And no matter what people can do, they cannot stop it. As a matter of fact, he's given power to overcome the saints. So the thing is today is that we can see, especially with this frustration where the government is taking mandatory measures and we can see we're not too far away from the rapture and from the Antichrist setting up his one world government. And I believe that there's a lot of Bible believing Christians and say believers who are frustrated with the government taking uh, more measures where they're able now to take away the liberty and individual rights of people. We're not at that point yet, obviously, but we're getting there and we can see that. And everyone is looking for a savior during this COVID-19. And then we can see the elites already at work. We can already see the apostate churches compromising even further. We can already see where the vaccines, the scientists, the politicians, the tech mongols, etc., are setting up solutions. And the world is all looking up to something. So we're not too far away. And the frustration is building up. And Christians are becoming more weak. But I just want to say this, is that despite of how the new world order will overrun the whole world, that the church, the Bible gave a promise to the church in Matthew 16, the gates of hell shall not, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's why we believe we're dispensationalists, because at Revelation 13, the tribulation saints, they're unable to overcome the Antichrist. However, the church is raptured before the tribulation, before the Antichrist sets up something. So the church, you got to understand, will prevail. They will prevail before the tribulation takes place. This does not mean that there will be a worldwide revival. The Bible says that there will be worldwide apostasy at the end of the church age. This does not mean that the church, they will overcome the new world order system. The Bible says that no one can stop it except the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, at his second coming. So the church cannot do it. But how the church will prevail is what it's always done. Going about its father's business, spiritually growing, winning souls, planning churches, helping missions, growing believers, spreading the kingdom of God. And that is how the church will overcome. I pray that you're not discouraged and you're not being ill or being weakened. And I want to disclose something right here. As I preach you this sermon, Satan, he has been attacking my health and my church. This is not to say that I'm very special or that my church is special. There's a lot of Bible-believing pastors and churches who are going through problems and struggles as well. There's nothing special about me. But because we share that commonality of a struggle, I want to encourage all of you who are struggling. So Satan, he has been attacking me. He has been attacking my health as well. 
Now, so far, it's nothing serious, praise the Lord. And thankfully, it's not the virus. Well, so far, it isn't. But there is no doubt that I've been weakened and that our ministry, uh, it's because my health and my stamina has been weakened, it affects the church as well. So that's the reason why I'm preaching to you like this for now. But this sermon will strengthen the power of the Holy Spirit, and I hope it will minister to you. So let's cover a few things over here. Is that first of all, a lot of people are frustrated with how Satan is trying to overrun the world. The government is taking more measures where people have more limited freedom. So because of that, there are now people who are waking up, who are being riled up, but they're doing it at the wrong way. They're doing the wrong way to defeat the enemy. And that's my biggest warning to the church, is that if you Bible-believing Christians take the wrong way to defeat the enemy, then the enemy will defeat you. There's nothing that Satan likes more than your impulsivity, than your pride where you think that you're right and that you know what to do, where you lack patience and you go ahead of the will of God, where you endanger your church, where you endanger yourself, where your ministry, where you feel like it's being limited and restricted in freedom, it's going to be restricted even further and pointed out by the liberal news media and the wicked government shaming the Christian church. So what I want Bible-believing Christians to do is to not be carried away by the devices of Satan. There are wrong ways to attack the enemy. It's not by hoarding up all your guns and hoarding up all your supplies, preparing to go through the tribulation, and we're going to attack the Antichrist by defending our constitutional rights, and etc. That is no way where you're going to defeat the enemy. Now, please do not misunderstand me. I believe where, do not, please do not criticize me where whatever constitutional rights we have, I believe that we should try to stand strong and promote it as much as we could. There are some Bible-believing pastors and churches who do it more so than me and other Bible-believing pastors and churches who do it less so than me. But whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. The point is over here, though, is that Bible-believing Christians, I believe that we're being very impatient and due to anger, we're doing things that can endanger our ministry and our health, and not only that, cause more division among Bible-believing brethren. I keep stressing this over and over again, and you know what? It's like a doomsday prediction, and I'm already seeing it. There are already some Bible-believing Christians who believe in meeting together as a church no matter what, and praise the Lord, more power to you. And then there are other Bible-believing Christians who went online so that they can still minister to the church like I do. Praise the Lord, more power to you. And then there are other Bible-believing pastors who unfortunately have no means of technological access or they can't do anything else to meet as a church, so they're, they have no choice but to be stuck at home. And then we got Bible-believing Christians being divisive against each other, attacking each other, criticizing each other, condemning each other, and that is what's giving more glory to the elite system. While they're becoming stronger and stronger, the Bible-believing Christians, they're becoming weaker and weaker. Should we not overcome together the wicked New World Order system to overcome Satan's dominion and kingdom, the apostate churches? Should we not overcome together the liberal school education system? Should we not overcome together? But we're doing wrong ways to do it. A lot of Christians feel like that, well, I have to... Uh, keep doing street preaching and visitation, pass out tracts. But you know, if the Lord led upon your heart in your church under the authority of your local church and pastor, that's one thing. But then if under a local church and the pastor where they decide not to do it, that's another thing as well. And if you're under that type of a church where you're going rebel and rogue, and then you're trying to, inf and then you're trying to pass out tracts to so many hordes of people, and then you catch the sickness, and then other people catch the sickness, how much help are you going to be? 
See, that's very unwise. Where you're working at your job and you're ruining the testimony of a Christian where you're being endangered of being fired and then you lose means of supporting yourself and your family, that's being unwise. You got to realize this. Our God is not a God of foolishness, but a God of wisdom. So you got to use wisdom. Don't use wrong ways to defeat the enemy. Use the smart ways to defeat the enemy. Aren't there smarter ways where you can minister the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Aren't there smarter ways where you can spread Bible-believing right doctrine? Aren't there smarter ways to attack the elite system rather than endangering yourself? And then now some people who are whistleblowers, they can't speak out anymore. They don't have much free access to speak out anymore. Why? Because they, drove, they got their attention. Our church has survived due to wisdom, see? And that's only the miracle of God. And some of you already know some of the stuff that I talk about already. So the thing is this. The thing is, is that we Bible-believing Christians got to use the right ways to defeat the enemy, not the wrong ways. What is it? Let's go out and win souls for Jesus Christ, plant churches. Let's go out, break up this quarantine then. Well, what is it? Patience. Sometimes it's the opposite of what we think. Now, if the Lord let it, upon your heart as a local Bible-believing pastor and church where it's not causing disunity and hurt among the brethren, where you go out and win souls and plant churches. I'm not against that, but where it hurts the church and breaks up the unity of fellow brethren and where the flesh is truly exposed and revealed of impulsivity, where you're frustrated that you can't stay at home anymore. That's something that the devil can use. Maybe the Lord's using this to work up your patience. Did you ever think about using that to defeat the enemy? Because all, you, all your life, you've always been impatient. What about love? What about supporting the church where you'd follow up with them, give them a call, encourage your pastor, where you need faith? It's a time where you just be still and know and trust God in his power that he will overcome. Praying for the filling of the Spirit. This is the best time where you can go to your prayer closet, fast and pray, and pray for the overfilling power of the Holy Ghost. This is the right way to defeat the enemy. Are you taking advantage of them or are you wasting them? Satan would not be more happy than to see you use fleshly impulsivity, foolish rashness, where he can just stomp you out, shame the public testimony of Bible-believing Christians, and wipe you all out like nothing. But by using these other means, patience, love, prayer, wisdom, etc., don't you think that the church can still overcome? That the church can rescue some lost souls from the chains of darkness and from hell, where we're using wisdom to spread the videos online where we can open people's eyes from the lies of darkness and show them the bright candles and the glorious light of the Lord Jesus Christ, of truth, where Jesus proclaimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, during a time, Satan, where he's winning, the elites are winning. One world religion is spreading even more. The education system is brainwashing our younger and younger generations. Where Hollywood is appealing the lusts of the flesh, where children are falling into the hellish music industry. During that time where Satan's kingdom is growing, especially during this COVID-19 opportunity, what is the church doing? Divisive criticizing each other, beating each other down. It's one thing to rebuke apostate churches and false pastors, but another thing with King James only dispensational, saved, Bible-believing Christians. How can we fall into that mess where we're divisive against each other? We gotta be rebuking the false pastors, not King James only Bible-believing dispensational pastors. We got to realize that at a day and age, the brethren are becoming weaker through division. People are getting more sick. I know myself that my health has been 
weaker. And if you look at my earlier videos, I think it's pretty obvious where I'm becoming weaker and weaker. Busyness because of taking care of work, school, and etc. Temptations are rising even stronger, and some of you Christians are about to throw in the towel, or some of you did throw in the towel because you're disgusted with your sin and the weakness. New trials are sprouting out, right? And some of you are just getting bogged down in the dumps, and you're like, I can't take it anymore. Where busyness is kicking in, health ailments kicking in, financial struggles are kicking in, and not only that, brethren forsaking you. And sometimes me as a Bible-believing pastor, if I've experienced it, and I might experience it now or in the future where brethren will forsake me, where they can't come back to church anymore, they can't support the pastor anymore, and you've seen brethren who you thought were close to you now turn against you, and they leave you all alone. And you know what? Despite of whatever trial, temptation, hurt, busyness, or ailment in my health, or struggle in my finances, or problems in my family, or the brethren turning against me, leaving me all alone, criticizing me, and being divisive against each other. You know where you're going to see me? Even if I'm all by myself, you're going to still see me preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it takes me by myself out in the streets, preaching when this COVID-19 is finally uplifted, and you see me preaching, out on the streets again, you're still going to still see me out there even if none of my members join me. If God takes away everybody out of my life and my family and my church, I'm determined by the grace of God to still pastor the church and still minister here at the San Francisco Bay Area. You're not going to see me go down. Now, to be honest, I am afraid because I know that I am. All I am is weakness, and that it only takes a little finger of the devil to crush me. I'm not, I'm not powerful than all the big shot elite system, all the politicians, all the rulers of the darkness of this world, the tech mongols, and then the religious leaders, Babylon the Great. I cannot overcome them. They can overcome me easily. I am very scared. But see, I know my place, that I am weak, frail, and dust. And it's because of that humility and that fear that the Lord can see that and realize. So Gene realizes that he is truly nothing. And that Gene realizes that he truly needs an act of God, the miracle and the finger of God to overcome all of them. So you know what? Because only, only by the grace of God and by the power of his protection, you know what I can do? I can overcome everything and anything in this world. And I will continue to fight. If you see me, if I become weaker in health, if I die out even further, and if busyness rises up even higher and financial struggles rises even higher, family problems rises even higher, church problems rises even higher, and then Bible-believing brethren fighting amongst each other about the stupidest, silliest things, and even if that happens in my church, you're going to still see me preach the gospel and overcome. How about you? How about you? Will you join me? Will you fight along with me? Or are you already carried away by the world, the flesh, and the devil? Fighting against, fighting about stupid, silly things. Making foolish decisions. Being discouraged about temptations and trials again. Being complacent now due to this quarantine where now your spiritual life has gotten cold. How about you? Are you going to fight alongside with me? You're going to still see me out there. You might say, but man, aren't you, aren't you already getting sicker? Don't you think you have to take better care of your health? Don't you think you have to be careful? Of course. See, that's the wrong way to fight the devil. See, the wrong way to fight the devil is that I'm foolish in expending my energy and my health. That's why I'm preaching the Sunday service like this, so that I can take better care of my health. But see, that's how I overcome the devil, is that, see, not the wrong way of wasting my energy and using rash zeal, but using patience. 
and using consistency and faithfulness and wisdom while taking care of my health and while taking care of my health, not giving up in my fight against the enemy. So I'm going to keep fighting, no matter what the trouble, struggle and the trial is. What about you? You know, some of you may be scared, and I'm scared too. Like I told you, I am definitely scared. I can be wiped out just like that in, in a click. I realize my position. But you know what? Guess what? No matter how much, even if I have all the heads of the generals of hell attacking me and Satan's wrath where he dashes me to pieces, and then I get whatever conspiracy is out there, whether there be the 13 heads of the Illuminati or whether it be the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati, whether Bill Gates is a part of it or not, and I get him onto my tail wherever I have the Obama administration or the liberal administration, all the Democrats, the Clinton powers, the Bush powers, I get Vatican the Great, the Roman powers, the Masonic elites, and then whether I get all of Hollywood onto my tail or whether I get all the Jewish bankers or whether I get all the Jewish elites or whether I get all the religious apostates and all the internet trolls who are already trolling me online, the liberal education system and the atheist trolls, the post-trip trolls, the Calvinist trolls, and all the world heading toward against me, guess what? I'm too angry. I'm too motivated. I'm too burdened about the cost of lost souls going to hell and souls being deceived by the wicked system that I throw in the towel and become weak and cry and whine and say, I give up. I'm too angry and too motivated to do that. Sorry, I can't do that. Never. I can't. I can't. So you know what? Because of this virus, I just want to say one thing. Thank you to whoever did that. Thank you, whoever tried to put me in quarantine. Thank you for trying to restrict my freedom. Thank you for trying to attack my health. Because you know what? Second Corinthians chapter 12, where Satan sent his messenger to buffet Paul. Paul said, through that weakness, he became strong. And I know this through my trial, through the past three couple of days, the Lord taught me where I surrendered myself and I became even stronger and more determined to never quit and to become and to fight back even more. You know, did you read Second Corinthians chapter seven where the Corinthians, they fell into temptation and sin. But you know what they did? They did vengeance to pay back against the sins that they committed in the flesh where they let God down. You know what this coronavirus situation taught me? To have vengeance against the flesh. To have vengeance against the sin. I'm going to pay back where they try to restrict me from witnessing, guess what? I'm going to pay back tenfold through prayer, through patience, through faith in God, and through trying to reach more souls out there and to preach this message. You know how this message, this sermon was birthed? Because you put me in quarantine, because you put me through suffering, because you tried to shut me up. That's why this sermon was born. Thank you. How about you? Can you say that? Why don't you take advantage of the attacks of the enemy and do the same thing? I don't know about some of you. Like you, I'm scared. Like you, I feel too weak, too pathetic. But guess what? Praise the Lord for this COVID-19 situation because it put me through a thinking situation where I got out of that state where I said, yes, I'm weak and I'm scared. And man, the devil can wipe me out just like that. But that's a time where that I have to lean closer to Jesus Christ. And if I have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can overcome me. Did not Romans chapter eight says tribulation, peril, the sword. Nay, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Did not First John chapter 5 says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Did not the book of John say, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Yes. Yes. So guess what? Oh, man, it's too hard to try. Oh, the temptation's too strong. Oh, man, the 
the government system is just running too deep and I can't overcome the online. It's just too much. Google, YouTube has full control now where the religious apostate pastors, they're going to get more of the views and the subscribers and etc. Hey, guess what? I don't have time to think like that and become weak. You know why? Because I'm too angry to think like that. I'm too burdened to think like that. For souls dying and burning in hell, can't you not picture our next generation, little children, as soon as they are born, guess what? As soon as you see that baby born in your arms, you know what you're seeing? You're seeing the next generation that will worship the Antichrist. The next generation who's going to scoff and mock at Jesus Christ. That little baby's face that you're looking at right now, that is the next generation you will see who will grow up and die and burn in hell for all eternity. So you think that I've got time to become weak and to be sob and to be complacent and to do nothing? No way. No way in hell. No way. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Guess what? The church will fall into apostasy. The majority will, and people will fall away. But that promise is true. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. You know why? Because even though the greater majority will fall, there will be a minority that will still stand up for Jesus Christ, that will still stand up to the King James Bible, that will still spread Bible-believing truth and still be empowered by the Holy Spirit. I want to be one of them. What about you? Will you be one of them with me? Guess what? No matter if any of the conspiracies is true, okay, and if any of these sad, tragic events will turn out to be true, which I pray not, but if it does happen, guess what? They cannot overcome. So let's take these cases. Let's say Bill Gates, he is where he's going to introduce the Antichrist system through the vaccines. Guess what? He will lose. If the Pope becomes the Antichrist and the Vatican takes over and rules over the world through the club of Rome where they take, take their 10 empires and through those 10 empires they take the 10 sons of God to rule over as demigods, guess what? They will lose. Guess what? If YouTube and Google take over the whole platform and Facebook where they dub it as fake news and then they throw away our channel and they throw away our church and they deny the truth that is being spread out, guess what? They will lose. Guess what? If Joel Osteen and Joseph Prince and Rick Warren and, the, and John MacArthur and the Calvinists and the post-tribbers and then the anti-Semites and heresy spread around the internet and their churches grow even more and Bible believers become even smaller, guess what? They will lose. Guess what? When the false prophet sets up and makes way for the Antichrist system and burns the tribulation saints and then sets them up as sacrifices, guess what? They will lose. If Catholicism grows as the largest religion in the world, it will lose. Islam is the world's fastest growing religion. Guess what? It will lose. Guess what? Whoever is in part of the deep state or the elites, whether it be the Clintons, the Bushes, etc., etc., Guess what? They will lose. You know why they will lose? Because Jesus Christ is the final victory at the end. He's the one that will overcome all the wickedness that is in this world. And the church is still here. We're not raptured yet. You know what that means? God still has a purpose for us to fight. God still has some battles for us to win. God is not a loser. God is never a loser. Every battle he gives to you and I, he has to win. So just because there's going to be worldwide apostasy, just because that the Antichrist has to set up his kingdom, and just because that we will never crush that deep state because the new world order system has to be in place, guess what? That doesn't mean the church will be defeated. God has some battle for us to win. 
I know my battle right now. And that's the sermon that I'm preaching to you. No matter what the temptation, the trial is, guess what? They will fall and the church will win. If the majority of the church falls due to apostasy, that minority of Bible believers, the ones that are true, close to God, real, real Bible believers, we shall overcome. Guess what? I know the filth is growing throughout the online and through cable and through our schools, but guess what? Righteousness will prevail. I know lies are spreading throughout all the world and especially online and that heresy is rising and I can definitely see that in the internet where the heresy is rising now. The truth is now diminishing because they changed the analytics and platform now in the internet. But guess what? Truth will prevail. I know that false love is growing where there's a perversion growing and hatred growing against Bible-believing Christians, homosexuality, a tolerance where they dub it as love for false religions and for lifestyles, and wickedness and sin is growing. But guess what? Love will prevail. Love in the Holy Ghost, love in the Lord Jesus Christ, a love for lost souls, a love for God's word, for the King James Bible, for dispensational truth, it will prevail. Guess what? No matter how many uh, people in the church that's fallen into apostasy and the majority has fallen, guess what? The church will nevertheless will prevail. And that church is not the majority. It's that minority, the real Bible believers. Guess what? I know that the Antichrist will come. The elites will take over. The orders are rising even more. I mean, you see all this stuff, the CFR, the Bilderbergers Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, and the bankers, the Hollywoods, the lodges, etc., etc. But guess what? Jesus will prevail. He will prevail. He will overcome. You know, while the devil is using his finger to push me down, and I can, can you picture him and the wicked world cackling at you? Cackling and laughing, pushing you down while you're becoming weaker and weaker. And here you are whining and crying and saying, oh, I can't do it. And they're laughing at you. And they're pushing you down more and more and more. And they're saying, that's right, fall, fall, fall. At that time, that is a time when they're pushing me down that I got to one-up them. I'm going to one-up the devil. So where they attack my health, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to one-up the devil. And where they're going to try to attack our church and close us down, I'm going to one-up where they close up our church. Where the wicked government and secular system is trying to prevent us and restrict us from witnessing and soul winning, I'm going to one-up them. That is a time. Look. When you're being attacked, that is not a time where you're just consider where you're still and you're doing nothing. That is a time where you gotta one up them. Hey, let me ask you this question. Throughout this past week, was there a time? Was there a time at least once or twice a week, especially when they're quarantining us and trying to restrict us, prevent us from spreading the gospel? During this time, have you once or twice done a one up against the devil? Have you ever done a one-up moment where you're like, okay, this is going to be a one-up moment where, hey, if you're going to shut me down, then I'm going to mail out like 50 to 100 tracks this week. Did you ever do a one-up against the devil where, hey, where this is, where you're quarantining me and trying to restrict me, that's where I'm going to read through my entire Bible by the end of this week where Satan and the flesh is wearing you down through temptation and sin, that's where you got to one-up them and say, I'm going to fast and pray all day today. Have you ever done a one-up moment? That is a time where you got to one-up them. And that's my challenge to you, church. My challenge to you is to one-up them. One-up the world. One-up the sin. One-up the devil. 
you guys been tired out, worn out. I don't know what kind of trial or temptation or sin you're struggling in it or what the devil is attacking you with, but this is a time where you got to take vengeance according to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 and 11, where you're taking vengeance. One up them. One up them. The time for one up is where you obviously don't do it unwisely. That's where Satan's going to get you. Don't do something rash and fleshly impulsivity. One up them by in doing something even more smart, more wise, where you can keep pressing on for the Lord Jesus Christ. One up the devil. Today, after this preaching is over, I challenge you, I challenge you that you one up the devil after this sermon is over. Will you do that right now? As soon as this preaching is over, one up the devil today. Fast and pray all day today. Or get in the closet and beg for the filling power of the Spirit. Or splurge tracks everywhere that you walk around in your neighborhood or your apartment complex or you mail it out. Or post our salvation video links where it says how to be saved and be a real Bible believer. Take that video title. Our, in our channel, and just spread it through every Facebook account, Twitter account. One up the devil today, or you got the devil onto your tail again, pushing you down again. I challenge every one of you today who hear this message, one up the devil. I'm going to tell you what, through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by his grace upon my weak, broken, sinful self, to the world, the flesh, and the devil, I say this. I'm going to one-up you. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure. You can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried, and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. 
Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you. Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. King James onlyism is double standards. Now there's a false doctrine out there called dispensationalism. Yeah, I, I don't believe one saved always saved. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. But you don't want to get identified with the reproach of what really believing this Bible is all about. You know what these wicked left-wing liberal perverts want you to do? Legalizing the marijuana or homosexuality or if the whole entire world turns against the Lord. Is that person saved? Is that person on their way to heaven or hell? The common person has no thought of God in their mind. That people will leave the church over the color of the carpet. What's wrong with our churches? Why don't we have a closer walk with Jesus? Why isn't everybody running around like little Jesus is shouting, screaming, and hollering? That thing you look in the mirror, it don't want to go street preaching. It don't want to read the Bible. It don't want to pray. It wants to watch TV and a bunch of other junk. A lot of you don't have it because you're lazy. That's why you don't have it. Because you won't work. That's why. Don't you know the Bible says, Whoa! Unto the wicked! And I'll tell you, Jesus Christ loved you enough. He came down here, put up with your dirty blade. The wages of sin is death. When you offer somebody a gospel track, if uh, you're walking away and you see them throw it on the ground, that's not because they're afraid of what's in it, they know what's in it. No matter where you are today, turn to God and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God Almighty got me through and got me through for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years. You mess with that book, honey, I'll mess with you. Shame on you if you don't read the Bible. Shame on you if you don't read the Bible. Shame on you if you don't witness with Jesus Christ. Shame on you. I like to whip that smile out of you. Give me your power, Lord. You know what we need? We need people to fall on their knees. We need people to pray to the Lord, raise the kingdom, Bible high, believe in this sensational truth. And Lord, I just don't want their power. I pray like Elisha, double the portion, Lord. Give within me, fill within me the filling of your spirit. Give me your power, Lord. Give me your power. Give me your power. And God, the Holy Spirit, will move upon this church and fill within him his Holy Spirit power. Amen. Then we'll see soul saved. Then we'll see God do something with this truth. Then we'll see the liberals and the homosexuals getting up in. Then we'll see those apostate Christians getting mad. Then we'll see all the world opening their eyes to the truth and they say, yeah, uh, we have not seen such a thing. Brothers and sisters, there's only one hope. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the man God, our Savior, Jesus Christ.